The Could Be Better Podcast Network is sponsored in part by the Frederick Let There Be Rock School. Let There Be Rock School, located in Frederick, provides a world-renowned music lesson program and an unparalleled after-school rock and roll community center. Listeners can now get their first lesson free when you tell them Could Be Better sent you. Visit www.frederickrockschool.com and click the contact button in the top right-hand corner of the page to get yourself started. Again, listeners of the show get their first lesson free if you tell them Could Be Better sent you. It's not too late or too early to learn your favorite Olivia Rodrigo, Dragon Force, or the Black Key song. So now go now to www.frederickrockschool.com and reach out today for your first free lesson. Okay, so we are here on this episode. Chris teased last week that we would never have another episode. That is not true. We are now having another one, and we may just well have another one after this. But I had this idea. We have run um, a few times this season a couple of the the interviews I've done uh, reporting for various media outlets in and around the city, and I had the chance, I had the pleasure to speak with uh, Natalie Brooke, very much a friend of Could Be Better. She plays all of our big Sky Stage shows, right, Chris? Exclusively. Exclusively, that's true. And um, I had a chance to talk to her. I think it was the day after um, she performed on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And because Could Be Better, if nothing else, is the go-to source for everybody in Frederick who plays late-night television... What's up, Anoop? Uh, I thought it might be an idea to to share some of that interview here. Chris agreed. So here we are. Now, Chris, what do you think of Natalie? Natalie's the best. I'm just kind of hoping you're just going to be like, let's roll it. And then this intro will be over and everybody would be stoked. <laughs> <clears throat> no, Natalie's awesome. Uh, from, I mean, I've, I've known her, we, I say this all the time. So for people that dig back to the archives, I'll probably say the exact same thing, but she's awesome. She's, um, uh, just got the best musical talent attitude towards music, wanting just to play and have a good time. Like she's the person you want to party with at shows. She's the best. Um, her band's really freaking talented. Um, she's really nice. Um, and what's not to love. Uh, so it's gonna be super cool. I'm excited to hear this cause it'll be the first time that I get to hear it. And, um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. And then we get a new song. Is that correct? Yeah, well, kind of. It's It's been on Spotify, she said. But I do believe this is, um, this was not a song. I mean, it couldn't have been a song. When did we have her on last? Would have been a look- year and a half ago? Yeah, I, so she, she was not on for season two. Um, so she would have been season one, which we're talking, holy cow. Take a guess. <laughs> uh... May 12th, 2022. Okay, so a year and a half ago. Um, This is a song that has been released since then. She also has a lot more stuff coming out. The reason that she was on, or the, the way she, that she ended up on The Tonight Show, she got a call about two days beforehand. This band called Thumpasaurus. Now, Chris, do you know them? Yes, I, she was also on French Late Night with the same oh, yes. band. Yeah. And we talk about that in this interview. Um, She got that call almost a year ago. This all happened, and I'll just put this here now. You're going to get from the part after she explains that one night in Washington, D.C., she went with a group of friends to see Thumpasaurus and um, some other bands and, and things like that, a band she really loved. That is now escaping me. She's going to kill me when she hears this. But she went to see this band that ultimately broke up, but she became friends with the Thumpasaurus guys. The beginning of the interview, as we have it edited here, is pretty much from when she starts to talk to them at the 930 Club in the process of then playing a show on French late late night TV. And then from then playing a show or playing on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. In between, though, she was at Cafe 611 and actually brought Thumpasaurus to town. They opened for her 
I believe. Whoa. Um, uh, this was after their 930 date. You'll have to listen to the interview to hear the details. But she uh, she was very pumped on that. And uh, I thought I actually you know what, Chris? I wake up with that song in my head sometimes. <laughs> the Thumpasaurus song. How about you? I mean, I I just love everything about that tonight show performance. So cool. And it was just it was it was awesome. And then he even like the singer like gives like, oh Natalie, and then she goes and just like rips one. It's the it's so cool. And I don't know. She talks I, about this. She talks about being nervous. And I, I could relate to this so much. And then I'll shut up because she was like, I didn't want my hands shaking when they went to the solo, but I knew they would shake, but I was also very cold television. And Chris, you know, this, like all the late night TV, it is like 40 degrees. Ice in all boxes. Those studios. Yeah. Ice boxes. You've been to a thousand of them on every network. You've, you've seen it all. You know that. And she was like, I don't, I didn't want my hands to be both cold and shaking. So she figured out a way to remedy that. Very excited. <laughs> I just love, she never passes up an opportunity opportunity to meet people. And she's just so cool and has a great personality and is, I don't know. She's going to hate hearing all this flattery because it's like all these nice things about her, but she's great. And it's like, she does this Amy Winehouse huge band thing every year in New Jersey or New York city. Uh, every every year during thanksgiving and like she's like yeah i was just at a bar in new york city and i bumped into these guys and then i started doing this thing and then like a year later i'm now playing these like tribute shows and there's like an insane amount of people and like it pays me a lot of money and like whoa like that's so cool she's just i am jealous of her networking skills for sure speaking of networking skills we have one thing to announce that's old news at this point um but emo night returns what year four year three what is this i think it's technically year three but it's number i think it's number th four so i think we did one one year I and then we did so. two the next year and then this would be the first one of 2024 it is saturday january 27th it's gonna be awesome now Colin and I paused for a moment because you could hear $5 bills flying out of people's wallets as they're hearing this. So this episode comes out on Thursday. Tomorrow, tickets drop. They are ready to go. You can buy your ticket. It's $5 for... For the bands. Give them the bands. Who is being tributed to? Good Charlotte, Weezer, Newfound Glory, and brand new. No way. You didn't know this. Yeah, brand you new. You did not tell me this. I, this. I have always this, made the joke, if somebody does brand new, I need to be in on that. Who is doing brand new? This band from Baltimore that I'm friends with. They're called The Revive. They, they've actually done this set uh, before at the first emo night in Maryland that I'm aware of in Baltimore at Soundstage. And they packed the place out and people went nuts. So I'm very excited because they're, they're a bunch of great, talented people, um, friends that I've known for a long time. Uh, and it's going to be wild. So I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, but I know I'm going to be there. And so you should too, at least just to experience Did it. you write into the contract that I can sing the bridge to 70 times seven? Is so that's that... what they're, that's what they're going to close with. And it's you, and there's going to be two drum sets. So you can come up and do like the big, cool drum the set big parts, like devil and God stuff. It'd be so if, sick, right? I know you are effing with me. We're not allowed to cuss, mm -hmm. but because you are effing with me, if I don't get at least half of these things, I will play the Good Charlotte set and leave <laughs> and set that place on fire. Yes. And so that's the final thing. So Colin and I are playing together in a band called Samuel Powers uh, for <laughs> well, the show. I, I'm just filling in for their uh, their regular drummer. But it would be very that. much fun to or will be very much fun to play these songs. And then I will go away because i'm what it might be the last show i ever play in my life even more important that we get to do it together so yeah. that that's me cool we have a band called dud uh they are featuring members of the band flagship uh from eldersburgish area mike the uh, guitar player dude uh we met him a couple weeks ago he's really nice and they're playing weezer we have marzi maddox playing the newfound glory set and then we have the revived 
playing um, brand new. So it'll be cool. So again, $5, January 27th. It's a Saturday at Old Mother Brewing. 21 plus to drink. All ages to have fun and attend. Um, it's going to be a good time. Limited tickets. They're going to go. And when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, we are going to cap it at a lower number than ever before. And it's going to be awesome. So this is going to be wild. I hope there's ice on all the roads and you can think of me when you forget. Okay, that's who do we pay now? Do the royalties still go to him? All right. Speaking of royalty, uh, this is Natalie Brooke. Uh, we love you. You're the best. Thank you for for doing this. Thank you for being who you are and more fun, exciting things to come from Natalie.
This podcast is brought to you in part by Special Tees. Are you in a band that wants merch but does not know where to go? Are you looking for great quality and affordable pricing? Do you have a design that you like to put on a koozie for your favorite consumable beverage? How about office swag for your job or giveaway items for all of your events? Okay, you get the point now, but you have to look no further than Special Tees for all your heart's printing desires. The Could Be Better podcast listeners can act now and get 10% of your first order if you tell them Could Be Better sent you. Visit their website at www.special-tees.com or use the link in the show notes to get the conversation started. You can even call ahead and visit their showroom to see all types of products, everything that they offer. Again, telling them Could Be Better sent you via email, phone call, or carrier pigeon. It'll get you 10% off your first order order that's www.special-tees.com special tees if you haven't worked with them they want to work with you we pick up in my conversation with natalie after she had explained how she went to see thumposaurus and she went to the 930 club and she left and she came back and she left and she came back and then finally she approaches the guys from thumposaurus about potentially playing with them um. One finally day. we like get back and I, I talked to the keyboard player of Thumposaurus and I just was like nonchalantly like hey you know have you ever like I don't know I forget what I said just like need a keys player for anything or I forget what I said but I just was just throwing a bone or whatever and um so then on Monday or Tuesday of the next week Turquoise announces that they're breaking up just on Instagram like let's say there's like 10 members in the band or something Eight of them were just a majority of the band, minus two people, all posted a collective statement being like, we're leaving, no more turquoise, bye. And <laughs> everybody was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was like this really successful funk band, like, just awesome. Um, and so we were all like, so upset, like, wow, that sucks. Okay, so then Wednesday, I remember I was supposed to go to, like, a workout class, and then I decided not to, so I was just sitting there on my phone, and I don't know if I had, like, Maybe I would have, like, missed my opportunity if I had gone to the class, like, not seen my phone. But so Marley forwarded me a Thumposaurus post saying, hey, we're stuck on the East Coast. Anybody have shows that we can hop on or a basement we can play or a backyard or whatever? And then so I just was like, whatever, sure, I'll reach out to them because I was going to play my first big headliner at 611 that Friday. Uh And, yes, so um, a band from College Park called Humbalaya was going to open, and it was just us two, and I was feeling pretty good about selling tickets prior to that because I hadn't, I don't think I had done, like, a big Frederick show yet. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was, like, feeling really good about it. Um, And then I was like, okay, well, this would really be the coolest thing ever if they came and played. So I messaged them, and they got, like, right back and were like, oh, this sounds cool, like, let me ask the other guys. And then I sent, sent that to Marley, and she was like, oh, my God. And we were like, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and, and um, so then basically they were like, yeah, this is a go. Like, you know, do you know how much we might make? Is there a guarantee, blah, blah, blah. And basically I was like, you know, I know we're going to do okay. You know, so, like, I think I ended up being able to give them, like, 500 bucks or something, which was, like, good for, like, three bands. And, like, you know, they could put gas in the tank and, like, buy some food or whatever. Yeah. Um. So the show was incredible. I think there was, like, upwards of 150 people there. And um, I remember people saying that, like, the bartenders lost track of all of the tabs. And by the end of the night, so many everybody just got handed, like, a $20 tab. Because they were just, yeah, they were just so overwhelmed. Everybody was just shots. And, like, I, like, my set went really well. The Thumposaurus set was just, like, crazy. A lot of people there didn't know them yet. But then some people there were, like, huge fans and were just, like, OMG, is Thumposaurus seriously playing in Frederick right now? Um. <laughs> Um, so they threw down and then I set in on Kitar. I actually still have some of those videos and they're just like, they're just chaotic. They're like amazing. Um, and you can tell everybody's just like sweaty, just like throwing down. Um, and then so it was like an amazing night. We had an after party at Marley and Jess's house. And then some source guys slept at my parents' house. Like we set up like mattresses and just like all this stuff. Woke up the next day. My mom is like a pastry chef and just overall like amazing baker cooking person and she made them like pancakes and like you know bacon eggs the whole thing and they all were like oh my god this is amazing so we just like connected big time essentially over turquoise breaking up marley sends me the post and then we had this amazing show that just like lined up exactly like that week and then 
Um, so after that, you everybody's like, oh my god, you gotta go on tour with them. I'm like, yeah, I fucking love to. You know, I hope they <laughs> ask me. But you know, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like I would be like, hey, we should play together again. But you know, ultimately, it's up to them. Like they're the bigger band, and like I was like, you know, whatever. I'll, I hope they reach out to me. And I basically like didn't hear from them. Um, but we would like keep in touch. You know, we all like, you know, we were like homies on fucking Instagram because they're from LA, so opposite sides of the entire country. And then um, almost exactly a year later, it's October of last year, um, I get a call from a number that I don't have, and it was one of the guys in the band, Henry, he goes, hey, Natalie. I was like, oh, what's up? Like, I'm on my way to a wedding. Like, I have a few minutes. And he was like, okay, like, crazy gig idea. And I was like, okay, hit me. So I'm thinking, like, well, are we going to play a show together in D.C. or something? And then he goes, so, like, we got asked to play on a late night show in Paris. Uh, like, Paul can't make it. Do you want to play? I was like, fucking, of course, yes. <laughs> and I'm thinking, it has to at least be a month away. And he was like, okay. And this must have been Saturday. And so he was like, okay, it's next Tuesday. <laughs> so it was like, a, yeah, it was like a week and three days away. So I was like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So basically, my passport was in fact expired, and I'm freaking <laughs> out, and I'm like, "Oh my god, how do I get a passport in one week?" And people are giving me like mixed things, and like, "Oh my god, what the fuck?" And then basically, I call the passport agencies. You can get it same day. So I call them, and they're like, "Okay, there's nothing available in DC, nothing available in Philly. You can only get it this week in Buffalo, New York." So I was like, "Looks like I'm going to Buffalo." So like. <laughs> Yeah, overnight on Monday, I drive my ass to Buffalo, cancel all my lessons, I text my students, I'm like, hey guys, so sorry, I'll explain later, everything's canceled for the next, like, three days. Um, so I go get my passport, come back, we go to Paris, we do that, we play on French late night TV, can't understand anything anybody says there, everybody told me, oh, French, like, they all know English, they're super cool. No, nobody wanted to speak English to you, when they do speak English, it's impossible to understand. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so that was like, that was a two day crazy thing. And that was the first time I really played with them. And they were like, dude, we can't believe you just came to Paris with us. I was like, well, thanks for asking me. Like I'm down for anything. <laughs> and then, yeah. So then that catches us up to like, and I didn't hear from them again for another year. And that was October of this, this past month. They asked me to play three dates with them, which I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. Like I want to play some shows. I want to play like a 90 minute set. So last month they asked me to play Kentucky, St. Louis, and then Nashville, and then they hit me up last week about Jimmy Fallon, and that's the whole story. <laughs> wow. So that that comes together within a matter of a week. You know that you're going to go. Did you cancel more lessons? <laughs> no, because it was like... Did I? No, yeah, we left Wednesday played Thursday and just came back today but like I have very intentionally squished my teaching schedule over the past like year or two from like Monday Tuesday Thursday Saturday to Monday Tuesday Thursday to just Monday Tuesday so that like whenever anything comes up close to the weekend or on the weekend like you know I can do it so oh, I didn't have to cancel anything that's cool and now I mean this yeah. obviously wasn't it wasn't French TV it was NBC uh, American late night television. I'm assuming you've seen the show before and you were familiar with it, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> absolutely. Especially like Jimmy Fallon. I just feel like he's a household name, you know? Like, who yeah. doesn't know that guy? <laughs> well, yeah. Did you, I, I just want to kind of ask about that whole experience. Were you able to, you know, like, did you meet the roots? Like those types of things? How did that go? Yeah, so, I mean, I really just shook the hands of a couple of the Roots guys um, after we performed because we didn't see them until we filmed. Like, we got there at, like, 9 to do, like, a bunch of sound checking and camera blocking, and then we came back for filming, but that was basically just, like, be there at 3 for hair and makeup and then wait until 6.45 to go play for four minutes at that point like jimmy and the actors and the roots had gotten there and they were all like in there like doing the thing so yeah i only got to like shake their hands but jimmy did come into the green room which they told us that like if he has time he likes to come and say hi to everybody but if he doesn't like you know he, he won't yeah. um but yeah so he came in he shook everybody's hand i gave hugs i think i gave him a hug i can't remember if it was a hug or a handshake <laughs> but then he like looked at all the thumposaurus guys and was just like I love your guys' music so much. Like, I've been watching all your shows on YouTube. Like, you guys have such great energy. Like, 
I just love you so much. So it's like very clear that he was like, I want this band on the show. And it wasn't just somebody saying like, hey, this band is like a hit song. You know, we should bring them on. That's, so, yeah. that, that's really cool then. And then like from there, take me through after you're done. You said you're, you're, you're probably wrapped it by seven o'clock. Uh, what, do you guys go out and celebrate? We did, yeah, we did, and like all of this, like I just feel like I have to shit out like their their main keyboard player Paul because like he the only reason why he hasn't gone to the gigs that, like I've played is because he is like a such a significantly a very successful piano player. He's currently on tour with Joshua Redman, who's like a really famous saxophone player. He just competed in the Herbie Hancock Jazz Competition, Jazz Piano Competition, and placed third. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so that's why he couldn't do like the Nashville and St. Louis gigs. But um, so yeah, he was in he was in Europe for this. Um, but wait, so what was the question? Oh yeah, so we all went out after and like we just like went to a taco place, you know, like somewhere where we knew they could take everybody. And yeah, as people were like coming in, like more band members kind of like coming in separately, like like you know our t- our big table would just like cheer, and it just was like. Everybody was just, you know, like, cheers and drinks and just, like, they were just, like, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to us. It's, like, a huge success for their band. Like, you know, you don't know what's going to come after that. And then after that, we basically went on, like, a a hunt for, like, the perfect bar with, like, not a lot of people and some tea and, like, a lot of TVs. And, like, <laughs> we were walking all over New York City just, like, looking up places and going in somewhere and being, like, ew, this place smells or, like some places would be like no we're not turning off the music even though it was just playing like lousy like edm remixes of just like ridiculous stuff um and you know they didn't want to turn off the sports or whatever so finally we get to this bar and they were like yeah like we're dead sure we'll we'll jimmy fallon show so they like turned off the music we all were at the bar i will send you this video when we hang up um and it wasn't until the very end of the episode it was like it was really the last thing um and yeah everybody was just like cheering and screaming it was basically just like the band everybody's like significant others because my boyfriend jacob who i think you probably met right yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah so he came and um i think a lot of them had their girlfriends there just like a few friends so it's it just like a group of like 12 people in this bar and we're just screaming and then everybody's like <laughs> yelling the lyrics and then like it's like my solo and they're like nah, nah you know like everybody's just screaming it was so funny because like i looked at the bartender a couple times because he was like what do these people want to watch jimmy fallon for so bad you know obviously we told him like hey we're playing and but then i was watching his face as he was watching like us watch the tv because he was like in the right in the middle and he was just like his eyes were just lighting up he was like wow this is cool i'm watching these people watch themselves <laughs> it was just like really cool so i'll send you that video it's just like everybody had their phones up because you know jimmy fallon's like don't be so and like it was just it was an incredible thing what did you think when he called you by name when in the middle of the song he turns around and says natalie what do i know <laughs> were you pumped <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i mean he always he always does that actually funny story in nashville he said nicole by accident which i thought was really funny <laughs> um obviously just a mistake but i mean yeah like i don't know it was just go time so it was like i knew he was gonna say that but really it was just the fact that it was my solo i was like don't fuck up don't fuck up you know yeah um because I just was like, I don't want this to be on repeat until I die in my head <laughs> I, if I mess up. But yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, like, I definitely still feel, like, really just, like, honored and, like, I don't want to say, like, starstruck being around the Source guys. I just feel, like, honored and I feel, like, there's such, like, a positive influence and they're so, like, nice and, like, welcoming and they, like, you know, make me feel, like, really comfortable. So, um yeah, it's always just, like, it's as easy as it could be to step in with a band, like, doing it with them, for sure. That, that's that's amazing. I, I have one geeky question I, I wanted to ask, mm-hmm. because I, I've always been interested to know how it feels and sounds on those stages. Like, are you getting everything you need? Is that is it an easy gig, or is it one of those things where you really have to adjust a lot in terms of just playing? It actually was so easy to hear um because we had a really long sound check it was three hours it was literally three hours and that was like in and out it was like go in place the instruments so like okay go back to the green room we'll grab you to make sound and then that was at 10 at 10 we go in we dial in the sounds we run it two times just for audio 
go back to the green room, come back at 11, and then camera blocking, run it two more times. So, yeah, and the room is, like, so treated. So it's, like, you don't have reflections everywhere, like, you know, playing in a brewery or whatever. It's yeah. like, oh, my God, I can't, I can't hear everything, but I can... I can't hear anything, but I can also hear everything. Um, but no, it wasn't like that. It was like super clear, super crisp. Um, and we actually all kept saying that like, they were like setting up the drums, setting up the keyboards, like doing everything for us. And we all were like, dude, we're so used to like loading into a venue, you know, <laughs> yeah. just doing everything, you know? And like, yeah. maybe you get like a 10 minute soundtrack, you go, okay, go. Like you turn around and start playing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that well, yeah. that's cool. That's that's really cool. And then it's amazing. Uh, were you had to have been nervous, right? Were you at least a little nervous? Oh, my God. oh I was extremely nervous. <laughs> the only thing that helps is knowing that I have felt nervous before and gone through it. Like that's really the only thing that saves me because it's like obviously I'm going to be nervous, and then at the same time, obviously I'm going to have to do the thing. Right. So you just have to figure out how to fucking make it work. So, <laughs> um, like, I actually, we all were saying afterwards um, that, like, it's because, like, the whole day, I, I don't know, I, I wasn't really, I think I wasn't letting myself think about it because I'm like, I don't want to be nervous for 12 hours or six hours. Like, I'm going to be nervous for, you know, before it. So I'm just going to save it. Um, don't say for, like, 90 minutes leading up, I'm just starting to get jittery. It's like I'm just, like, sensitive to, like, everything going on around me. I, like, got dressed early. I'm like, I just want to be dressed just sitting here, like, waiting to go. Um, <laughs> and I was, like, practicing, like, my solo, like, a lot. Just, like, just make sure my fingers are warm because I know they're going to be shaky. So I don't want them to be yeah. shaky and cold. And then so for, like, I would say 60 to 90 minutes, like, my whole body was, like, feeling the nerves. And then I got up there, and I would say, like, in the beginning of the song, I could I could feel it, you know, like definitely having an effect on me, even though I can like mostly play through it. Like, but then once I feel that, I'm like, I don't want that to run my entire performance. So I just was like, just it's four minutes and six seconds. Like, you're nervous, like just just like just try to control it and just like do the damn thing. And I also knew I was like, I don't want to look back and like not feel like I crushed it. So I was like, just fucking crush it. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah. You you did, man. I mean, watching it back, every, you, you looked comfortable. You even danced a little. It was like you were into it. You didn't look nervous at all. Thanks. Yeah, actually, you know what my, my brothers said? They were like, we could tell that when your solo was over, they were like, you were like significantly like different. And I was like, you guys are so right. I was like, <laughs> I, was like I just have to get through my solo. I just have to get through my solo. Because like, so right after my solo is where I like broke out some moves. I was like, yeah, I did it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So I guess the the last thing that I'll ask you then uh, is is kind of what's next and if uh, there is anything else in the fire with those guys. Like, are you going to be with them in a little more? I mean, I assume so because they always are just like, you know, hey, like, I'm, I know we're going to play together again. So, but everything has honestly been pretty last minute. Like, the, the earliest I've been hit up was, I think, four weeks before I played, like, that run of shows. Um, so, I mean, essentially, yes, but a matter of what it is or when, no clue. <laughs> um, how about, yeah, I don't, go ahead. how about you though? Are you, are you going to record anything or do you have shows lined up? What's up with you? Yes, I'm doing a lot of recording. So I actually, I do have one show left this year that I'm very excited about. So my, uh, instrumental band, the Infinity Tribe is playing at the Atlantis. Oh, which is cool, yeah. You? Very cool. Yeah. Yes, new venue. So um, that's Wednesday, December sixth, and we are opening up for Lamp Trio, which is a um, a trio of people from Trey Anastasio Band, and I think J Rad Joe Russo's Almost Dead. I believe yeah. that's the other person. Um, so it's gonna be cool. And then yes, I have so many releases lined up. Like I have a single coming out in a couple weeks, a song we've been playing for ages, and then recording a little EP also in a couple weeks putting that out, turning it around as fast as I freaking can. <laughs> and then the Infinity Tribe has an album that is done, pretty much done, um, that we're going to release probably spring of next year. So it's basically just going to be like a bunch of releases and then hopefully start playing a lot again in like March, April and on.
The Could Be Better podcast is recorded at the Could Be Better studios somewhere in the middle of Maryland. This state-of-the-art facility has welcomed in everyone from Ringo Starr to 50 Cent, and it can accommodate all of your podcast needs. What? Never mind. If you like what you hear, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, and Zanga. Do not forget to check out our website, www.couldbebettermeh.com. Com. Also, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts if you want to make sure we come back for a fourth season or don't and maybe we'll listen to you. Well, plus don't forget to check out all of our brother and sister podcasts exclusively within the Could Be Better network. And if all else feels, hey, at least come out to a show every now and then. Wait, we do shows? <sighs> this is so much fun. I'm Chris Perry. And I'm Colin McGuire. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. And don't forget, this could always be better. The Could Be Better podcast is proud to be a part of the Could Be Better podcast network. We're passionate about creating and using these platforms to dive into topics such as exploring lo-fi, impulsive, small, and otherwise overlooked artworks and creative practices, what happened in the world this week and how to laugh through or at it, and hearing stories from musicians of all walks of life. Check out these podcasts, Could Be Better Podcast, This Is Not My Magnum Opus, The Weekly with Kiki, and a brand new show with Stitch Early called The Population, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can visit couldbebettermeh.com slash podcasts in the show notes to see the current shows on the Could Be Better Podcast network. Let's hang out as we figure out more about ourselves, the community around us, and why Ted Lasso is the greatest show of all time.